Good morning, Crown Family Church. Good morning. If you'd like to take your seats, if you're getting a coffee, it's too late. And uh, just want to say Happy New Year to everybody in the room. Welcome to those of you who are joining us today, maybe the first time. Welcome to those of you who are regulars as well. And uh, we just want to say uh, welcome to those of you who are joining us online. And uh, we hope you're all well, hope you're all blessed. And uh, hope to see you all soon as well. If you're joining us online and you want to share or, subscribe or um, like the post or maybe comment, let us know how you're doing, let us know you're joining us. I just want to encourage us this morning as we go into our praise and worship. And the Lord put this on my heart last night. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18. And it says this, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I just want to encourage you this morning, whatever circumstances you're in, whether it's been good or bad, maybe today or been, maybe it's been a bad start to the year or a good start to the year, I just want to encourage you in all circumstances, the will of God is that we give thanks to God through Christ Jesus. So this morning, let's meditate on that. Let's give thanks in whatever circumstances we're in. Hallelujah. 
Your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. 
says in Romans 8, verse 34, Jesus Christ died for us and Jesus rose from the dead for us. Hey, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, the risen King, ever, ever interceding for us, fighting the battles for us. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to do it in our own strength, Lord. Just look to you, Lord. Because you wear the victor's crown, hallelujah.
together again when she gave five maybe what on the 30th of December as I wrote it down and it was for Brown family and it reminded me again because I thought Lord you haven't given me the full word so I'm not going to share that's when Lindsay started <laughs> the door started stirring it's Joel chapter 2 and again he gave Joel chapter 2 it's the whole of Joel chapter 2 but I'm just reading this bit that is relevant this is from Joel chapter 2 verse 12 yet even now declares the Lord return to me with all your heart with fasting with weeping and with mourning and rend your hearts and not your garments return to the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and he relents over disaster who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God blow the trumpet in Zion consecrate a fast call a solemn assembly gather the people consecrate the congregation Assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the festival and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, I'm sending to you rain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied. And I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. I remove the north afar from you and drive him into a parched and desolate land. And it says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done great things. Fear not, you beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit, and the fig tree and vine give their full yield. And it says, Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain. The early rain and the latter rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. I'll restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and there is none else and my people shall never again be put to shame and then the last bit it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions even on the male and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth blood and fire and columns of shall be turned to darkness and the moon to, be, to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Yes, Lord Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for the pouring out of your spirit even more, Lord. You said, where sin and sin even increases, your grace even abounds even more, oh my God. Lord, pour up your, your, your spirit, Lord. Holy Spirit, pour more and more and more of you, Lord. Lord, as the days are getting dark, Father, I thank you for the 
God. Let us not play with the authority you have given us, oh my God. But let us use it to your glory. You have given us so much. The devil is roaring, but you are roaring even more because you are the lion of the tribe of Judah, oh my God. The devil may be like a lion, but you are the lion itself, oh my God. And your eyes are flaming with fire, and your spirit is full of fire, and you are fire itself. And the Holy Spirit goes with fire before us to even burn even that our enemies before us. And your warring angels have been put in place. And I thank you, Lord, for the days are evil, but Lord, your power even goes even more. Your power flows even more, oh my God. Father, I thank you. Remember the God of all glory. You're the God of all power. You're the God of all fire. Pour it out, Lord. 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 Just receive the Lord and just pour it out. And if you receive it, or if the Holy Spirit pour it out to you, recognize Because they are soldiers of the body of Christ, they cannot be left behind. And when we are in a war, we cannot leave the soldiers left behind. So I felt these words from the Holy Spirit for some reason. And God gave me the word war. I don't know if it's something the spirit or something. I don't know what God means about war, but. At the same time, the last thing that God showed me is that, is that when these things happen together through revival, He will be putting out the supernatural power and a glory that we never saw before. It's something that our senses cannot understand it because it's something so powerful, so above. And uh, yeah, that's what I, I felt from the Holy Spirit. God, church. I thank God for this morning. I've never done this before. This is my first time. When I was there, the word God deposited words into my spirit. This is for Sister Rebecca. If she's here, she can come forward. If not, we can all grab this word. I was struggling not to say or not to stop because I've never done it before. I found it in my spirit, God, saying that we should come out of our comfort zone and we should move forward. We should never fear. It's our Father. He loves us. He is with us. We should move forward. The changes will come. We should not fear. It's our Father. It's with us. It's ahead of us. Whatever we want to make, the changes that are ahead of us, we should always go forward and do them. Do not fear. He is with us. He's watching our footsteps.
of Isaiah chapter 60 says this. Sea darkness covers the earth. Thick darkness over the peoples. But. But. Yeah, come on. But the Lord arises upon you. And his glory appears over you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, thick darkness over all the people. But the Lord rises upon you. Father, we thank you for this new day, this new time, this new chapter. Father, this new season in God. And Father, as we hear your word this morning, Father, as we come to your presence, as we have dwelt in your presence this morning, Father, I declare and I prophesy an end of the siege that has been on the people of God and the start of something new that is birthed now in the name of Jesus. And these signs, the signature of God, shall accompany him who believes in my name. In my name. Whose name? Jesus' name. In his name. Hallelujah. These signs will accompany him who believes. Father, we declare today that we are your believing ones. Father, we thank you today that all things are possible to him who believes. And Lord, we declare that which has been impossible with man to now be possible with you. All things are possible. All things are possible. Somebody, would you believe it today and not allow your mind to get in the way, but allow his spirit to flow through you. For all things are possible to you who believe. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for an end of the siege. We thank you for an end of the isolation, an end of this season we've been in, and the start of something new, that even though darkness might be all around us, we can say with confidence that your glory rises upon your people. Let the glory of the Lord arise upon us. Let the glory of the Lord rise upon us. Amen. Amen. Well, happy new year. Are you ready to uh, give to the Lord this morning? Amen. Yeah? Are you ready to give to him? It's the first time in the year. Sorry, Alex, I'm just going to go for it. Because the time is short. First time of the year, we come with our first fruits. We come with our offering before Jesus. Part of this is an attitude of our hearts. It's an attitude of our worship, our expression of thanksgiving to him. It's not something we do out of duty. It's something we do out of love for the Lord because he first loved us. And as we sow into the family of God, we're sowing believing that we are partaking in the same grace that is upon this house, upon this ministry, but also upon Christ himself. That as we sow to him, the flow of the Holy Spirit flows in and through us and out of us to the world around us. So grab your offering envelope. I want to give you opportunity just to fill it in and to make a special love gift this morning, this first Sunday back. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Let's not just give as those who don't hear this Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give with purpose this morning. Let's give with a sense of being led by God. Amen. We don't give out of... Uh, a dil- just a diligence or a, a sense of duty. We give because the, the Bible says that those who sow sparingly reap sparingly. And those who give bountifully will reap bountifully. So if you want to give this morning, the, the card is on your seat. You can give my debit credit card. Uh, if you don't have any of that and you just want to say, yeah, I, I believe the anointing is here and I'm sowing for a breakthrough. Whatever it is that you're, you're wanting to give to this morning, just write an IOU, whatever you want, and please honour it. That would be great. If you're also joining us online and you want to be part of this this morning, you can give directly into the Crown Global Bank account. The account details 378 239 That's 378 239 with the sort code 090127. 090127. You can also do that through the website crownfamily.church or crownglobal.com. Click on the button that says give and you can give using PayPal or any of those other means. Church family, we also have some little leaflets, volunteer and serve on your seats. These last four months, um, really, there's been very few of us who have just been going for it because we've wanted everyone to be not under any pressure 
during this time of transition here in the upper room. And so we've just been going for it in order to bless you, but now it's coming the point where we need different ones to step up and to be part of the vision and really see God calling you to be part of something that he is doing amongst us. And there are obviously lots of teams in the church that we are wanting to fill and get functioning so that God can use us in this next chapter. So whether you feel that you can serve in a capacity as a welcomer downstairs on the door, whether you want to be a park, car park attendant, or you want to help with tea and coffee, those are all things that uh, we're looking for. We're also looking for more people with the prayer ministry team. How many people know that prayer is the life engine room of the church? Amen. And so we want to see prayer really accelerated. Lindsay is doing a fantastic job already of leading us in worship, isn't she? Isn't she doing wonderful? Yeah. We love you, Lindsay, and as Lindsay has stepped up into this new role, we are commissioning her as the worship pastor in the church, and she's taken on the admin role as part of that to, to help administrate everything behind the scenes. We need more worshippers, and so we're gathering worshippers together. So if you play an instrument, you have a heart for worship, you want to sing or whatever, the only stipulation is that if you don't really can sing in tune, we're probably going to ask you to sing from your seat without the microphone. But you can still be part of the team and be with us and pray with us and be a blessing. So if you want to be part of the worship, that would be great. Also, Graham does a fantastic job every Sunday. Give it up for Graham. We love you. Kelly does it every single week. It's not hard. You just come on, you turn it on. That's about it. And uh, then there's the laptop that you go up and down on. It's a little bit more. But we give you a full training. If you want to be part of that team, that would be a blessing. Hey, we're also launching missions and outreach because we believe that God has called us to be a missional church. Amen. And part of what we're starting this week is a series on the power of the gospel. Amen. Say it with me. The power of the gospel. And so we're going to have Jonathan Comrath with us next week. And he, I believe, he's going to really impart something to us of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of God unto salvation. So we've asked Lenny to uh, uh, kick off with leading us in a mission this year. Um, woo, that's going to be awesome. So we are going to be taking a team over to somewhere. We don't know where yet, but we probably think it's going to be Romania or somewhere like that. And there is a young people's home group that has started up, which is going to be every month. And some of those guys are going to go for it. And if you want a heart for mission, you're saying, yeah, I want to be involved in mission, both locally but also internationally, then come and see Lenny. Talk to Lenny. Talk to me. We're going to believe for mission because God wants us to reach people with the gospel of Jesus. And, you know, as we go, as we get sent out, part of what God does is he does a work in your spirit where you get changed, you get transformed, and you come back more on fire than when you went. Amen. And then we can start doing this here locally as well. Because Jesus, the gospel, is both to Jerusalem, Judea, to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Why to Samaria? Because that was transcultural. That was not the culture of the Jews in Israel. It was to the local, to the nation, to the nations, but also to every ethnic group. Amen. And so as we do this, we're going to believe the Lord that we're going to see hundreds and hundreds of people saved. Amen. Hundreds of people yes. saved. Come on, you need to say amen at that point. Because we're going to see it. We're not going to be a people who cannibalize from other churches. We're going to see people saved. Hallelujah. We're going to see people come into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabbi Kassandar of Asanda. Hallelujah. Woo. Someone said to me this week, said, Steve, you need to stop worrying about uh, people calling you an evangelist. I said, well, I'm not an evangelist. And I said, they said, yeah, I know that. But part of what God is going to do through you is going to, you're going to see start crusading again and doing things like that. Things that I dreamed of when I was a, a child. I used to have the pictures of Reinhard Bonke with the, the crusades that he did with hundreds of thousands of people in Africa stuck on my wall. And I believe that that's part of who God has called me to be. And I believe it's part of who God has called us to be in a church. That we're going to be a missional church. Amen. So missions and outreach. Finance and admin. Paul Johns is uh, currently over in South Africa with Heather watching today. God bless you guys. We're very jealous of you. I've unfriended you on Facebook and <laughs> taken you off WhatsApp, Paul, because I can't stand your pictures anymore. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Uh, but Paul is going to be taking over the finances working with Rosemary and others to help with that. So if you want to be part of that administration team, that would be great. And we want to see kids and youth thrive in this church. How many people love children? 
Amen. I just love the kids. It wasn't it great. I just watched your daughter getting her guitar out and I thought, wow, we got to get up here. I don't care if she can't play a chord yet. She just needs to stand there and play that thing. And as we see them come through, we're going to see a whole army of children and young people thriving and celebrating Jesus. So if you have a passion for youth, a passion for kids, even though we might not have loads right now, there's a group of kids out there and they are hungry for Jesus. You know, Nathan and Alex, they sit in the back of the car and they said, Daddy, put the CD on. I said, okay, all right. We put the CD on and they sing at the top of their voice. They know every song that we sing here and they could probably lead it better than I lead it. And so I said to Nathan, Nathan, now that you're seven years old, you've now got to start getting ready to lead worship. And he's like, yeah, I know, Daddy. It's just that I, I need to get the tunes because when I know all the words, I can't remember them yet. So he can't read yet. That's the problem. So once he can read the words, then he'll sing. He's got a beautiful voice. And Alex, too, we're going to get them up and doing that. It's going to be great, isn't it? So if you've got a passion for kids, want to see them thrive, then tick that box. Are you done? You got? Have you filled this in yet? Have you filled in your offering envelope? You ready to give? Father, lift it up. Father, we're here for you. Lord Jesus, this is about your kingdom. This is not about building an organization. This is about the extension, the furtherance of your kingdom. Lord, we sow in faith today into what you're doing here in this place, in Crown Family Church. Father, we pray that you would multiply this seed. Multiply it, Lord, for your kingdom, both here and in the nations. Father, we pray that you would bless the nations through us. That, Father, every tribe, tongue, ethnic group would be represented, Lord. Father, I have seen in the spirit that you have woven a tapestry of different people from different creeds and backgrounds that are to be part of this church family in the future. Lord, we pray that this seed that we give as our first fruits love gift of the new year would bring about a change in this community. It would bring about a change even in us, Lord that would propel your gospel forward to the ends of the earth in Jesus' name. Amen. And Nancy, would you mind just grabbing that bucket there and please pass it around, put that in, and also you can put your volunteer slip in as well. If you want to take it away and pray about it, that's cool as well, but we do want to activate you as quick as possible into that. And if you've got questions about any of these teams and you're unsure about it, just want more information, please go and see me or Lindsay, um, and Lindsay will take your details and get you on the system. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> What else have I missed? We need to do notices. Alex, have you got that slip of paper that I gave you earlier? Isn't it great when Jesus shows up? It disrupts the programs and that's fine. So notices for this week. We have a number of different things happening. Everyone say next week. Next week we have Jonathan Conrath with us from Mission 24. John is a, a an, an apostolic voice in this nation. He runs a ministry called Mission 24, empowering evangelists throughout the world. And he has on his heart at this moment something for the UK, you know, empowering mission teams all over the UK. We want to see the UK saved. And, you know, the, the time is ripe for harvest. The, the fields are white unto harvest. What does that mean? It means that the corn seeds of wheat are at the optimal point to be harvested. In fact, there's actually another thing, because when the wheat goes white, if it is left without being harvested, it dies. Did you hear me? It dies if it's not harvested at the right time when the wheat is white. And so when Jesus said the fields are white unto harvest, there is both an urgency in God that the time is now to go and reap and bring in the harvest. But there is also a sense of purpose that God wants to send us out. So we're going to have the gathering on Saturday night starting at 8 p.m. at Cushwell Baptist. We've invited everyone from lots of churches around about. Uh, that's going to be great. We've got the full, full Crown Global Band with us. That's 8 p.m. Cushwell Baptist Church. And then Jonathan Conrath with us in the morning. Everyone say church lunch. Church lunch. Church lunch. Now Doyen's back in the house. Welcome back, Doyen. It's so great to have you back from your travels and holiday. We love you so much. But Doyen does the best jerk chicken around. And, you know, Nancy does the best curry around. Um, if you want to compete with these guys, then uh, the competition floor is open. And, and I will ple be pleased to be the judge of this competition when it comes to curry and jerk chicken. But whatever you want to bring, if you want to bring plantain, from that, you know, Zimbabwean guys, you can, you know, you can just go for it, you know. And, but, but remember my golden rule. What's my golden rule? No 
quiche. No Christian quiche. You bring a lot of it. <laughs> you can bring whatever you like. We're going to put it on the table and have a wonderful church lunch after the service. So that's next Sunday. Okay. I'm going to rattle through some other notices. We've got a number of women's events coming up. The, the ladies have been meeting the core leadership team. It's Lindsay, Dorothy, Lee, Michelle, and those guys will be meeting together. And there are three key events coming up. I'm going to tell you about the first two. The first one is on Friday, the 28th of January. They're going to be watching the Redeeming Love movie that's coming out. It's a great opportunity to go and have a movie night, go to the cinema, see it with them. That's Friday, 28th of January. Um, I'm, actually, is it the cinema? I'm not sure. Or are you yeah. Doing, yeah, it is at the cinema. Great. Okay. So. Sorry. Sorry. Um, at the end of the service, and then anyone who's interested in the movie, just maybe. That'd be yeah. great. Yeah, go see Lee. If, you want, if you're interested and you, you want to know more, put it on the comments, guys, if you are there, and I'll pick that up. But go and get in touch with Lee, and we can make that happen. So that's Friday, 28th of January. And then Saturday, the 26th of February, Dorothy is going to be hosting a ladies' day on the Saturday for you to go around her house and have fellowship together. And we're planning a conference for March. I'm not going to tell you much about that yet, but it will be a day here in the upper room. You've got some speakers lined up for that, which isn't me, praise God. So you get to have someone who's a real blessing, who's going to minister to you. That's the ladies. We also have our men's event. Everyone who is a man say, yeah. 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 Men's event, Friday the 21st of January. It is pizza, and everyone knows Knows that when pizza happens at Graham's, it happens. So this is your opportunity to come to Graham's house. Please go and see Graham or Daryl at the end of the service. Daryl gives a wave. Everyone knows Daryl or Graham at the back. And we want you to invite someone to come along. Invite a friend. Bring them along to the men's night. Leave the women at home with the kids for that one night. And you can come and have fellowship with us. That would be awesome. Okay. Right. Nathan. Nathan. Oh, they can't hear us. It's Sambu. Go on, Anna. Knock on the door. We're going to sing happy birthday to Nathan. He's seven today, and we celebrate our kids. Nathan! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nathan. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Nathan. We love you. Have a great time today at your party as well. That'd be great. All right, everyone, give them a give them a high five at the end of the service. Right. Everyone will say hi to you. Okay, that's great. We got the offering done. Have a great day in the uh, kids church, guys. You can go back in there. That's cool. <laughs> Quick, shut the door. <laughs> Amen. Will someone give me the time because I, I haven't got a clue anymore. I know where. Quarter to twelve. Quarter to twelve. Just be 15 minutes. That's fine. Plenty of time. The word that I have for you this morning is not a detailed word but it is a simple word, a simple word. And it's a little bit of a strange word. I woke up this week and the Spirit of God said to me, the siege is over. And I said, Lord, what is that? What is the siege? Well, if you think about siege, I suddenly started looking at the scriptures, looking at what the siege is. Where is there an example in scripture of sieges taking place? And what does it mean when people get put under siege? Well, the thing is, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises a standard against him. And so whenever the enemy comes in, darkness comes around, we have been under lockdown. We've been under siege. We've been isolated. We have been contained. And the Lord said to me, I am bringing an end to the siege. Now, I don't know what's going on with COVID. I don't know what's going on with the variants. But, and I don't care, to be honest. All I care about is what the word of the Lord is for now. And so often we say, Lord, there is a new season, a new day. And you hear prophets all around the place going, it's a new season, it's a new day. And you think, oh, here we go again. Another season, another shift, another change. But there's no good just prophesying about a season. We have to speak what the word of God is into that that season in order that it can come about. Amen. And that's why in the new season that God wants for us, it's not that God wants to do something new. He wants to do the thing that he declared at the start. He wants to do the thing that he spoke about at the very beginning. But we're always saying, Lord, do something new. Do something new. Well, Jesus says, well, I already have given you everything you need. I just want to do that thing. You know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and he spoke forth and he said, let there be light. He didn't say, let there be stuff. He didn't say, oh, just let there be this and that. The word that God gave was specific. The word that God spoke was direct. It was a word that brought transformation. 
and we've spoken about this at the end of last year. But you remember and the, the last uh, time that I really prophesied to you concerning the year of 2021, I spoke about double, double, double trouble, double glory, double acceleration of what the Lord wanted to do. And, you know, I, I believe, believe that in March, the Lord spoke to me that he would take us into a period of 10 months. And this wasn't just here at Crown Family Church, but the body of Christ, particularly in this nation, would go through a 10-month transition, a 10-month of coming out of the old into the start of something new. And that 10-month season comes to an end, I believe, at the end of this month. And we're transitioning this month into the new thing. And so the Lord spoke to me concerning this, that he was about to release a wave of reformation, a wave of transformation across this nation. And I saw it like a wildfire that started started in the north and it rapidly began to spread throughout the south and I believe that God has positioned us as a church to be part of catching this wave that is coming amen some people can only see themselves with eyes of the past but God wants you to see yourself with the eyes of the present amen he wants you to see yourself with eyes of the present what he wants to do today this day friends this is not a time for just hundreds to be saved, but across the world, it is the time for millions to come into the kingdom of God. The time is now for the advancement of the gospel. I opened up just before we uh, we had the, uh, the offering with that scripture from Isaiah 60, and I started reading in verse 2. See, darkness covers the earth, thick darkness over the people, and then this little word that changes everything. But, but, what happens Though thick darkness is everywhere and covering the people, the Lord rises upon who? You, upon me, and his glory appears on us. Arise, shine, for your light has come. I want to turn quickly to 2 Kings chapter 6, and this might be a bit of a strange verse uh, for me to kick off with, but I'm just going to open it up because I was looking over when the Lord spoke to, spoke to me about ending the siege. I started looking through the scriptures about where there were sieges. Second Kings chapter 6, and I'm reading verse 24. This is famine that happened in the besieged Samaria. Sometime later, Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, mobilized his entire army and marched up and laid siege to Samaria. <clears throat> now there was a great famine in the city. <clears throat> the siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver and a quarter of a cab of seed pods for five shekels. Okay, so we have an environment here where an enemy army, army siege, uh, brings siege to the city and there are people that are locked down. You know, navigating a mindset a mentality of siege, I believe, is what we've been through over this last period of time. What happens in a siege? Behaviours change. Habits get in that are wrong habits. You start eating donkey head rather than enjoying the meat that is right for you to eat. And because you're in a habit of doing it, you're in a way of doing it, it becomes an attitude, it becomes something that becomes a permanence in your life. And suddenly you realise that even though the siege has ended, you're still doing the thing that you were doing when you were in the siege. When you're in the lockdown, you're living in a certain way, and God brings an end, he says, it's finished. And even though it's finished, we still do things because we've developed habits of behaviour. And the Lord says, I bring you to an end of the siege in order that you can now thrive and function to bring transformation to the world around you. Hallelujah. And so God wants to do something new. Yes, it's a new season, but the siege mentality, the lockdown mentality, the thing that is in our mind that even causes some people not to come to the upper room on Sunday is broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm getting excited. Forgive me. I like to shout a bit when I get excited because really I'm African and everyone knows that in Kenya we shout, don't we, Dorcas? Amen. Come on. I don't know if you saw the Band of Brothers thing on a few years ago. It was the series that was on BBC and it's been on IHD and all the others. Uh, but as part of that, you know, you see the, the sort of Second World War and Hitler and Hitler uh, surrenders. But yet, for months that go on past the period where Hitler has surrendered, there is still battles fighting taking place. The, the war was over. The end had come, but yet there were things that were happening. Why were they happening? Because mentalities had, had been so fixed. They'd been so 
changed in people that people continue to live in that way for some period of time. What am I saying to you? God is declaring an end of the siege. He's declaring the end of the old way. And you know what happens when you're in siege? If you just look through this book in 2 Kings, you will find the prophet Elisha is, is sat there in his house with the elders and he is there and this is being brought on as a result of judgment to Israel. And he's sat there and the king of Israel in Samaria, in the siege city, says, go and send someone to kill the prophet of God. You know, whenever there is something that takes place in a time of siege, wrong mindsets, wrong habits, wrong things that we speak come into our mouth. And we have to ensure that as God says, I bring an end to the old way and the start of something new, that you do not allow the bad habits, the bad words to be spoken. Because you will kill the anointing. You will kill the word of God. You will kill the very thing that could give you life by what you say, by what you do. So the Lord says, I bring the end of the siege. I bring the end of this season. You know, God answers with specifics, doesn't he? He didn't say in Genesis 1, let there be stuff. He said, let there be lights. And we are in a period where we've got to ensure that what is coming out of our mouth aligns with what he wants to speak. In this season, friends, can I just caution you in God and give you an exhortation to watch what comes on your lips. Watch what comes on your lips because what happens is the media portray a message that comes over and over and over again and it's like a narrative that just corrupts what the Lord would say because we listen to it, we listen to it and it vibes our hearts. It takes over the way that we think and suddenly we find ourselves speaking something out. You ever been in one of those times where you have sort of that small talk? You know, we went to a, uh, one of our friends uh, had a birthday last night and we were saying to my friend Alex, I said, Alex, you ever find you're just sort of talking small talk to people? Oh, how's the weather been today? Oh, you know, it's not too bad for this time of the you know, how's, how's business? Yeah, our business is good, thanks. And you, oh, yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, how's family? Yeah, they're good, yeah. You know, and you go through this conversation which is utterly meaningless, it's utterly fake. It's just, oh, yeah, yeah, we're all good, yeah, how many are you? Well, thanks. And actually, we find in that time, the thing that we talk about is, oh, this year's been a terrible year, hasn't it? Oh, another lockdown coming on. Oh, this new variant seems to be a little bit less than the other one. But, you know, oh, there's all these things take about. Oh, I'm not going out to places much. What about you? Oh, no, me neither. You get how it goes. Suddenly you find yourself speaking things out of your mouth because of idle talk that are not aligned with what the Spirit of God wants to say. And so we have to align ourselves with that which the Father says, speak out his words and realize that we are a prophetic people. And as we speak, whatever we speak, the word of God comes upon our words and creative power takes place. This is what brings transformation. So what you speak in this season of ending the siege is vitally important vitally important we start to even disbelieve what the promises of God are concerning your life concerning the future because we've been under siege because we've been under lockdown we start thinking oh well God's word over my life was this but it's not coming apart to pass this year because of all the things that are happening so I'll just sit here and I'll just wait don't disbelieve what the word of God is begin to speak it out if God's spoken over your life that he's going to use you this year, begin to prophesy it from your mouth. Begin to speak it over your family. Begin to declare it over your life. Amen. The siege has to be broken. We've been living in two years of trauma and confusion, disappointment. And in some of us, me included, we've meditated on fear, isolation, loneliness. But you know, poor diet has to come to an end. Uh -huh. <laughs> poor diet has to come to an end no longer are we going to eat donkey's heads why be a wonky donkey when you can be someone who's alive for Jesus amen some of us are still eating the fruit from the old season because we're not allowing his word to come into fruition in our life I believe with all of my heart that the Lord spoke to me that this season would be a season of the miraculous 
a season of the miraculous and those of you who are on the Amen. prayer net team on whatsapp yeah. i've Come said on. that i said i believe god yeah. is going to start doing creative miracles amongst yeah. us yeah. and i believe yeah. we're going to need to set up a monthly healing meeting here in this place Amen. so that we can start inviting the sick and infirm to come i don't even care if they come with covid omicron i'm going to lay hands on them with my mask on and they're going to get set free in the name of jesus Amen. because his power his gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The Greek word is the word dynamis. It's what we get dynamite from. The dynamite of, dynamite of God. Why would we allow something as small as COVID to affect what God wants to do? To affect what his word wants to do? Because you know how this church is going to grow. There's going to be unusual manifestations of his presence and power. There's going to be notable miracles that take place. And the community around are going to hear that there's a church that meets in an office building that are experiencing a move of God. And they're seeing people who have got short legs that grow. <laughs> Hello. You, They're going to start hearing these things. You, They're going to start hearing about the blind who have come to Crown Family Church yes, and come Lord. suddenly can see. Yes, you say, well, you're just speaking out. Yes, I am. Because this is the word of the Lord and I'm agreeing with it today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to reveal his power and his glory. We don't need a new thing. I've got so obsessed at last year of saying, Lord, what is this new thing? What is the new thing? What is the new thing? And the Lord said to me, I don't want to do something new, Steve. I want to do the thing that I said that I would do. I said, okay, Lord, well, what does that mean? Is it in a new way, a new way? He said, yeah, for sure it is, but it's not a new thing. It's the thing that I spoke to you about. The Lord said to me, I want you to speak forth creative miracles. I want you to start speaking out anointing. You know, we've learned to compensate for the lack of anointing by creating religious visards. Religious visards, things that like smoke machines. Now, okay, I used to run an event management production company. I love this stuff. This stuff makes my heart warm inside. I love lights. I love things that sparkle and glitter. I like pyrotechnics. I like nothing more than lighting fireworks at times of the year. It's something that gets me going. I'm sorry, that's just who I am. It's how I'm made to be. I love the fact that the steel decking truss, it weighs hardly anything. You can lift the whole thing with your pinky. That, that, that really gets me going. I don't know about you, but when I laid this building, the person that put all this together on the floor, underneath your seats are all of these cabling. Who do you think did that? I did it because I love it. Yeah, it took time and energy and sweat, but I love it. And that, that's just who I am. But you know, we sometimes have allowed things into our services that are facades for the anointing. You know, some of you think that in order to experience God moving in your family, and for you to perform a miracle with your hands, you somehow need me or Taya with the Roland keyboard with that pad sound. And then the glory comes. Well, hang on a minute. We need to pray for at least half an hour in tongues, and then God will do something by his spirit, because by the time I've prayed in tongues, then the glory will come. Brothers and sisters, no. You just step out in faith. You just speak the word. At any appointed time, you say it. You decree it. Heaven comes and confirms it. And then we see it in our eyes. You know, God is just wanting his glory to be manifest. What is he looking for? He's looking for a people who have faith, a people who will believe it, a people who say, yes, God, I'm going to take a risk. And if I don't see it this time, I'm going to go again and again until I see it. I'm not going to be affected by disappointment. I'm not going to be affected by the fact that last time I prayed for someone, I didn't quite see it the way I thought. No, we just get on with the business. Get on with the business. Hallelujah. The Lord is breaking these things, these facades off us, and he's returning us to the power of the gospel. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 26, reading a little bit down on the story. As the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried to him, Help me, Lord, the king. The king replied, If the Lord does not help you, where can I get help for you? From the threshing floor, from the wine press? He asked her, What's the matter? She said, this woman said to me, give me up, give up your son so that we may eat him today. Tomorrow we'll eat my son. This is scripture. <laughs> so we cooked my son and ate him. Have you not read this part of the Bible before? Yeah. The next day I said to her, give up your son so we, we may eat him also. But she has hidden him from me. 
This is the mentality of what happens in a siege. Crazy, isn't it? You're eating donkey brains, donkey head. You're killing your own son just to get some food because they had nothing to eat. When the church moves into siege, what happens is cannibalism. What happens is you lose the effectiveness of seeing the gospel for what it is and we start saying, how do we get more bums on seats? I know, let's hold a meeting, let's hold something and try and rob stuff from the other churches to get them into this church. That is not going to happen here in Crown Family Church because we want to be a blessing to the churches in this city, in this region. We want to see the gospel preached and the glory of God come and the thousands, the masses around these areas here in southwest London and Surrey come to relationship with Jesus. Mm. What happens whenever there is a siege is cannibalism. Cannibalism takes place. Newly saved people, you know, they're so easy to release into mission because they haven't lived in the Christian bubble like you and me have, where we've learned how to do things a certain way. You just tell them it's the gospel. What you do, you go out, you pray for people, they get healed. And they go, oh, okay. And they do it. And with baby faith, childlike faith, we were obedient, but we've allowed religious facades to get in the way of the anointing, to get in the flow of what he wants us to do. You know, if you're always living for a moment, it produces sporadic holiness. Let me just address this quickly. You know, if God only comes for two hours on a Sunday morning in a church service and you get a nice feeling because Lindsay did a great job releasing her gift and anointing to you, And then you go away for the rest of the time. You come with an attitude that says, well, I'll get it on a Sunday and that's it. Then I can be used by God the rest of the time. What it does is it produces an attitude that festers sporadic holiness. What do I mean by that? Well, if God only comes on Sunday morning at 10.30, then it doesn't really matter what I do on Monday morning at noon. Well, of course it does. You know, if the Queen were to come here to BTS House today and she walked into this place, I bet your bottom dollar that every single one of us would change our behaviour. Every single one of us would change our attitude. Every single one of us would respond differently. We'd probably stand up. We might, some of us might do a little curtsy. Some of you might suddenly do your shirt up a bit better or tuck yourself in. Because when royalty comes, you change the way you behave. Because there's respect an honour that is given. Friends, I'm saying to you today, the King is here. The King is here. The King of Kings is here. Jesus is in the room, and he's not just here in the room with you, but he goes with you wherever you go. 24, 7, 3, 6, 5. Jesus, he is with you. Christ, who is in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. I know I'm preaching. It's because of time. So please forgive the fact that I'm being a little bit shouty or whatever. It's just I've got to rattle through. You see... If we have a habitational mindset, then we will just limit limit God to two hours on a Sunday. But if we have a mindset that says he is with me and that I am his ambassador, I am a royal priesthood, then we expect him to use us Monday morning at nine. We expect him to use us at times that inconvenience us. Because we're about his kingdom. We're about furthering the gospel. About furthering his kingdom to the ends of the earth. And what happens on Sunday? It is a time of high praise and celebration. A time of great glory. Because we come together from our different backgrounds. Our different um, places of living. We come together and we worship him. And he reveals himself. And we go, hallelujah. The king's in the house. And then when we go off, we start seeing it happen day by day. Hour by hour. And you believe God. You believe God for the miraculous to flow. And what's happening? Start to see it. You start to see it. How is this going to take place, guys? It's not going to happen by me putting on another meeting. It's not going to happen by me just putting on another meeting. It's going to happen by every one of us getting into a place of faith. The city was under siege. The word of the Lord came to declare the siege was over. But they were still eating donkey head. It took four lepers, I haven't got time to read you the rest of the story, but four lepers, people who are on the outskirts, who left the city and they went to go and find out what what was going on in the camp of the Armenians. And they went outside and these lepers began to eat proper meat, drink proper drink. And they said, we can't contain this to ourselves. We've got to go back and tell the king that they've gone, they fled. The battle belonged to the Lord. The Lord disturbed the camp. The Lord did it. So they go back. What happens? The word of God that was prophesied through Elisha comes to pass. 
You can read that in 2 Kings 7, verse, verses 3 onwards, 3 to 7. Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and Egyptian kings to attack us. They got up and fled in the dusk, abandoned their tents and their horses and their donkeys. They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. Where am I? Right. You know, in this season, I believe the Lord is going to break us out of the structures that we've been in. Structures that we've put in place so that we can experience liberty. You know, church is not a hospital. Let me say that again to you. All the pastoral people in the room are going, oh. no. Church is not called to be a hospital. This isn't the place where you're going to get repaired. That happens when you get saved. When you're out on the mission field, that's where you get repaired. I want to say to you, the church is the launch pad. Church is to be the launch pad. That you come here and you get thrust out into everything that God has you to be. Yes, God wants to transform our lives. Yes, he wants to heal the broken. Yes, he wants to set the captives free. One moment in the presence of the Lord can do that. Some of us think we've got to go through a program and a, a, a discipleship training course to get set free. One moment in his presence can do that for you. Not always. Sometimes it is a process. Yes, we know that. That's why we have all of these fantastic things through prayer ministry and counseling all those times. But we need to believe that the power of God is still the power of God that saves. Still the power of God that delivers. Amen. And so this church is to be a launch pad for us to go out of this place. Commercialized Christianity is created to please people and not to further the kingdom of God. Crown is not going to be a place for spectators. It requires our participation. Hallelujah. I've heard it spoken that this is going to be like a wave. A wave of awakening. Some have seen it like a fire. Others have seen it like a flood. Others have seen it like a wave. You only have to look back on church history and you will know that in the greatest moves of God have taken place where greatest darkness has been so prevalent. Where the darkness is, that's when God moves. Amen. Because he brings light. When the enemy comes in like a flood, Isaiah 59, 19, the spirit of the Lord raises a standard against him. So my friends... Today is the time for you and me to arise, for you and me to shine. Friends, the Lord is rising on us. This is not a time to, for hundreds to be saved, but in this nation right now, I'm believing that over this year that there are going to be thousands and millions of people coming into relationship with God, that God will mobilize an army of churches, an army of believers to take back that which the enemy sought for harm. Hallelujah. You see, if your words are different to his words, then you're not in agreement with him. What do we mean? Well, just spoke to you about millions of people getting saved. The first thought that went through some of your minds, well, see, that's millions, but we're, we're in Wallington right now. Maybe three or five would be good. No, we need to align ourselves with what the Lord speaks, because when God speaks a word, if we, if we question it and we say something different, actually we're not aligning with heaven, and therefore we become an obstacle. The stage has been set. For the greatest awakening and move of God that the church has ever seen. That the world has ever experienced. And you know what? He calls you and me to be part of it. The stage has been set for the greatest move of God to take place. When? Now. This year. These next five years is going to be such a rapid time of acceleration of the gospel. And this morning before we begin this series of the power of the gospel, I want to just declare and decree to you that as Jonathan comes next week, it is going to be like a turbocharge of us going up again. And we have got to get in faith. We have got to get in faith to start seeing the lost saved. Come on. Will you join me this year in that mission? Will you join me this year in the mission of Jesus to see those people that don't know him come into relationship with him? Because the stage has been set for the greatest move of God that the church and the world has ever seen. Father, this morning we want to yield to you. We thank you, Lord, that we've just had this beautiful extended time of worship, of being in your presence. And Lord, you are wanting to do this. We don't want to be an obstacle. We just want to align ourselves with your purposes. So Father, right at the start of this new year, here at Crown Family Church, Lord, we're asking that you would raise our expectations. Lord, we're asking that you will bring in the right people. Father, you will cause us to be aligned with heaven. 
Father, to speak that which is not right into being in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we give you the glory. We thank you. And we say yes and amen to everything you want to do. Lord, may we decrease and may you increase in order that your name and your fame may be felt and known here in this locality throughout Southwest London, Surrey and beyond. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's someone here who has been getting like a uh, clicking in your right ankle. And as you've been walking over the Christmas period, it's just been like a twinging, twanging thing that's been going on in your ankle. I can't describe it, but it's causing you a little bit of pain. Someone else here who wakes up, you're getting a pain in your right side of your hip. It's mainly in the mornings, goes throughout the rest of the day, and then it comes back. It's like a, it's not a bone pain, this is a muscular pain. It's in your like right buttock area. Who are those people? Someone else who is, if you, if, if these, any of these apply to you, by the way, just come and stand here with me because we're going to pray. I've, I've been asking the Lord for miracles, and so I'm reaching out in my faith for it this morning. There's someone else here who has just found that you have had like a, um, a lethargic thing that's happened. It's been with you now for over a month. You thought it was just tiredness coming into Christmas, but it's like a, just a lethargic sense of you waking up, you're still tired. It's just like a whole tiredness thing that's come upon you. Uh, it's a spiritual attack, and the Lord wants to set you free from that so that you can walk in complete liberty. Who is that? It is someone here. Don't be embarrassed. We're just going to pray for you. And God is going to save you. I'm just going to give out all the words that God gave me, and then we're going to pray. Because so, I don't, please don't come to me at the end of the meeting and say, "Oh, it's me," because <laughs> they will miss your moment. Okay. Somebody in there as well. Okay. I can I hear in there? I'm not sure if they can hear in there, but that's. Uh, is it on Graham? They can't hear in there. Okay, that's fine. And it, the the last thing is for um, I have this thing about eyesight, um, and. Uh, this is a bit radical, guys, but um, the Lord said to me that in this season we would see people who need glasses no longer needing glasses. Oh, um, oh, uh, so, again, suddenly it's all the people with glasses. That's a, that's a good word. <laughs> Praise God. But I, I don't know what it is, but uh, He is the restorer of sight. You know, if we didn't have opticians, then we would need miracles. Uh, because we wouldn't be able to get out and wouldn't be able to see. But we, because we have opticians, we think, oh, no, it's fine, I can survive. No, God wants to heal sight. Um, right, and there's one other thing. There is a situation that the Lord spoke to me about that's happened over uh, the Christmas period concerning your family. There's a person here in the room who you have found that there has been just a, a confrontation that has been going on with a member of your family, and it has not come to an end yet. It's still in conflict. And you said, Lord, I need a resolution here. The, the, the reason I'm giving you this word today, word of knowledge, is so that you know that God is in it. Great. Okay. If you want any of these miracles, you need to leave your seat and come. Just come and stand here. If you want the Lord to heal your sight, come, come now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right, okay, there's a lot of you. I don't know what, what you're responding to, whether it's all the sight thing or one of the others. Just raise your hands for a moment. We're in the presence of God. We're in his presence. And in his presence, miracles happen easily. They happen easily. Father, I thank you. Thank you that you're here right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you know every situation. Lord, you know absolutely everything. Father, miracles are easy for you. All, the, all that we have to do is just believe. So, Father, I thank you right now for a release of power now in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every demonic spirit that has operated to bring torment and torture and discomfort and things of difficulty in family situations. I break it now in the name of Jesus. May it be broken now in the name of Jesus. And right now, Father, I release healing power flowing into everyone who is standing here now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Power of God, flow now into thee in the name of Jesus. Be healed now. Come into order. Everything out of order comes into order now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. 
Shendere bakasa katanda. Brede menen du siyan ande. Rebende de mositere makanda de basakura mala mashianda. Shelemati la masoto la bossa bebesina. Nene mositere mazende sene makavate. Fire! Fall now in Jesus' name. Be healed. Jackie, be healed now in the name of Jesus. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Everything that's out of order, come into order in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just begin to turn to each other and pray for each other. Daryl and Jill, just begin to pray for one another. Dave, just pray for each other now. Just release it. Release it to you now in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing now flow. Let it flow in Jesus' name. Now be healed. We declare an end to every trauma, an end to every pressure. Now in the name of Jesus, I release healing to you, Chris. Healing to your body. Healing in the name of Jesus. Okay, Father, we thank you right now for restoration. Lord, whatever needs to be done, Father, you know and we speak healing now into his body. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that by your stripes we are healed. Father, I release it to them now. In the name of Jesus. The whole of their family, let it be marked by the anointing. Father, as they have sown and sown and sown and sown, now may that now be released back to them in Jesus' name. Come on, church, let's begin to pray in tongues. Let's begin to pray in tongues now. Not the same tongue that you prayed over and over and over again. Come on, pray a new tongue. Pray a new thing this morning. These signs shall accompany him who believes. Literally, the signature of God shall accompany him who believes. In my name. In my name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We praise you for miracles. We praise you for miracles. Father, we push through for miracles. Lord, believing your word. We believe your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, do it in this place today. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, demons will be driven out. We thank you, Father, that we shall speak in new tongues. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that the signature of God shall be revealed upon us. Father, we will pick up snakes with our hands and it will, we will by no means be, formed, be hurt. We will drink deadly poison and it won't harm us. Thank you, we will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall recover. Dave, we speak recovery now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, recovery, recovery. Daryl, over diabetes, we speak recovery now in the name of Jesus. Recovery now. Insulin levels come into order now in the name of Jesus. Blood sugar levels come into order in Jesus' name. Would you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet and just say these words with me. Jesus, I agree that your kingdom is here and your kingdom is now. Use me for the furtherance of your kingdom in this place for your gospel's sake. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, we've come to the end. But God is good all the time. Amen. He's good for you this week. Let me pray the Lord's blessing over you. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you. For those watching online, may you know the peace of God that passes all understanding. May his glory be with you this week. May you walk in favor and blessing, both in your work and in your play as well. May you know God's peace and favor in every area of your life. In Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Some of you are looking at me going, and now.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. See you again next week. God bless you. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>